but I've always come back to eating disorders, okay? Unfortunately, Laredo does not offer very many resources for mm -hmm. that. So we know that one out of every 12 individuals in the United States right now is overweight or obese. There is an epidemic. And yet, you're right, when you talk about it, there is a stigma that is attached to them because of the way that our culture has looked at it. Have my patients received medical help? Yes. When we started, we always looked at basic science, calorie consumption, energy output, and they have to balance, you know? So we took this approach for years and years, and the more research we did, we continue to do, because nutrition is a very young science compared to math and literature and other ones, right? So the more that we understand the role of a lot of the hormones, a lot of the gastric juices, the combination of the two, that's still in, in its infancy as far as the research and everything. We said one out of 12, um, adults is overweight by 2030 we're expecting that to be one out of nine when you get to have a bmi of 40 it's very hard to lose weight and sustain that new weight for a long term why because we run into lifestyles we run into exposure to the media and peer pressure because we do a lot of um, eating out, and the, the choices aren't the, the best, right? We do a lot of um, self-soothing eating, okay? And a lot of what we call um, reward system in the form of eating. So all that, and then the media exposing us to what is out there for us to choose from? We have a very, very strong media. An average adult is exposed to at least 20,000 commercials a year. Does that? And a lot of them, I'd say about 40% of them are food. Okay. And then the other ones that, that have uh, like personalities or they usually have um, heroes that have come to be known to our society as those ideal body weight images. So they're not gonna have a person that's 5'1", 300 pound um, adult being the hero or heroine in a romantic commercial. Mm -hmm. You never see it, you never see it. Mm -hmm. uh, when, I grew up in, when I grew up, I was a big kid. I mean, we didn't know what a fork and a knife was, it was flour tortillas, uh, my mom didn't say, oh, you know what, this is how much you got to eat, you know. So there was no education from my mom-wise on food-wise. So you just keep eating, 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 and get big. But I never really cared what I was doing. So my dad built me this self-confidence, you know. So being big wasn't a big deal. You know, like, mm -hmm. oh, poor guy, he's fat. Well, yeah, because he keeps eating. How am I going to feel sorry for him? Because I'm tired of, like, anybody feeling sorry for anybody. The kid is eating. You go to Stripes. Red Bull, Cheetos, the mom's buying tacos, you know, like the health is not there. Mm -hmm. And then we're supposed to feel sorry for a kid who's overeating if he doesn't even see himself. So it's the upbringing. And I, you know, my, I my, was my. probably like around 700 pounds. Oh. I was super heavy. And then my back started hurting me and I would, I would still lift weights, but I was like, cause I was too big for what I was doing and stuff. And my back was like, one day my legs just gave up. Like I was on campus. Like two, like a month before graduating, my legs gave out. So I was bedridden. Like literally I was paralyzed for like four months. So literally I had to learn how to walk all over again. It took me like another month. High school, like we're always, I was always big, but I was never told, oh, you gotta lose weight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause I was always a big guy who was really fast. So like, oh no, no, you're, you're fine. But it's the same thing. First, I was the biggest dude on campus. I went to go lift weights. So this small man, because everybody's way stronger than I was. So what are we gonna do? I'm just gonna get stronger now.